Hello, I'm Kanan Rajendran from the University of Ghent, IMIC. Today, I'll be presenting a recent work on forward stimulated balloon scattering in freestanding waveguides on a silicon photonics platform. Let's start with a quick introduction on stimulated balloon scattering or SBS. It is the nonlinear interaction between an optical photon and an acoustic phonon in a photonic waveguide. In the schematic below, we see a pump and a Stokes optical mode injected into a waveguide. The beating between the pump and the Stokes results in an acoustic wave generated. Taking a look of the dispersion diagram on the right, we can determine the frequency and the phase matching conditions between the pump, Stokes and the acoustic wave. In case of forward SBS, the acoustic wave vector is approximately zero. This means that it's a mechanical standing wave. Such SBS nonlinearities has been shown on chip for different material platforms as well as for different waveguide geometries such as calcogenite rub waveguides on SOI, suspended silicon waveguides on silicon nitride or a silicon strip waveguide on an oxide pedestal or even a low loss silicon nitride platform. But it must be noted that in all the shown examples, either the material platform is non-CMOS compatible or contains no active components. In this work, we show forward SBS in IMAX I-SUB50G, which is an active silicon photonics platform. I-SUB50G contains passive components such as grating couplers, waveguides, ring resonators and filters, as well as active components such as modulators, phase shifters and photodetectors. The integration of SPS on a mature silicon photonics platform, rather than being standalone fabricated devices as shown in the previous examples, enables advanced on-chip SPS applications such as microwave signal processing and is a step towards large-scale low-cost commercialization of such applications. Here we have designed two different kinds of rib waveguides which are brilliant active. These are the FC and the SKT waveguide. From the cross-section, we see that the two waveguides differ in the edge depth in the 220 nanometer silicon device layer. For the FC waveguide, the edge depth is 70 nanometers, whereas for the SKT waveguide, the edge depth is 150 nanometer. Below the cross section are two microscope images for spirals of the length 2 millimeter for the FC and the SKT waveguide, respectively. On SOI, the silicon waveguides provide a very poor acoustic mode confinement and the acoustic energy leaks away through the buried oxide. Hence, the rib waveguides have to be suspended to achieve good acoustic mode confinement. In the inset, you can see the openings and the tethers in the silicon device layer. The openings allow for the underetching of the buried oxide to create suspended waveguides, whereas the tethers act as mechanical support to the waveguides to prevent the collapse during the release step. We also measure the optical losses in the waveguides. It's 2.5 dB per centimeter for the FC waveguide and 3 dB per centimeter for the SKT waveguide. We also developed a wafer scale release of freestanding waveguides for the IMEC ISIP 50G platform. The fabrication steps are as follows. We start with a standard ISIP 50G coupon. The typical cross section of the platform is shown here. We can see the SPS waveguides and the buried oxide below it. Note that the top oxide layer above the SPS waveguides have been removed. First, we perform atomic layer deposition of 50 nanometers of alumina on the coupon. This is done to protect the back end of the line from the buried oxide removal step. This is followed by defining an edge window over the SPS waveguides. The edge window is created by patterning the alumina layer via ICP RIE dry etching. Finally, a HF vapor edge step is performed for the isotropic removal of the buried oxide below the SPS waveguides. From the schematic, we can see that the alumina layer also prevents lateral etching of the top oxide around the SPS waveguides as well as protect the other active components on the chip from HF vapor attack. After the freestanding waveguides are fabricated, the SPS is characterized by using a cross-phase modulation scheme. Here, the schematic of the cross-phase modulation experimental setup is shown, where a strongly modulated pump is used to induce SPS in the rib waveguides. The SPS response is imprinted onto the probe via cross-phase modulation. Let's look a little bit more into the details of the experiment. Consider a pump laser as shown in red here. The pump is modulated at a frequency omega using an intensity modulator. 
This generates two sidebands with respect to the carrier as shown in this schematic. Following this, the pump is amplified using an EDFA booster amplifier. A bandpass filter is used to reduce the noise in the pump signal post amplification. The amplified pump and a weak probe are combined using a 50-50 combiner and injected into the SPS waveguides via grating couplers. An isolator is added to prevent back reflections from the chip. As a result of cross-phase modulation from the strongly amplified pump, the probe is also modulated at the output of the SBS waveguides. Then, a bandpass filter is used to only remove the pump signal. This is followed by another filter to remove one of the side bands of the probe. The fiber bracket grating filter has a bandwidth of 2.5 GHz centered around 1550 nanometer. This is done to convert the phase modulation in the probe to intensity modulation, thereby enabling detection at the photo detector. The photo detector is connected to a VNA. The RF output of the VNA is amplified using an RF amplifier and fed to the intensity modulator. Note that in our experiment, the higher frequency sideband or the anti stokes sideband of the pump is removed using the FBG. An example of the spectrum that is obtained from the VNA is shown here. Notice the three sharp dips highlighted in the plot. These represent fano resonances that occur due to the interference of a narrow band SPS and a broad band Kerr nonlinear signal. By fitting the fano resonances, the key figure of merits of SBS can be extracted. The fitting function for the asymmetric Fano response is shown in the topmost equation, where delta represents a normalized frequency, which contains the mechanical frequency omega m, the mechanical quality factor qm. Gamma net represents the net nonlinearity in the silicon waveguide, which contains the SPS nonlinearity parameter, the Ken nonlinearity, two photon absorption, and the free carrier parameter. Here, the Ken nonlinearity is obtained from numerical simulations whereas the two photon and free carrier parameters are obtained from literature. By fitting the FANO response, the mechanical quality factor and the SBS nonlinear parameter can be extracted. The Brulwin nonlinear parameter, gamma SBS, is commonly used in the nonlinear optics domain, whereas in the field of cavity optomechanics, the equivalent single photon optomechanical coupling rate, G0, is used. Using the conversion formula shown here, the G0 can be calculated from the extracted gamma SPS, mechanical quality factor, and the mechanical frequency. The optical group velocity is determined from lumerical simulations. By fitting the FANO response obtained from the VNA for different rib waveguide geometries, the gamma SPS and G0 can be extracted. We start with a 2000 micron long FC rib waveguide spiral. From the probe response, four different FANO resonance peaks are obtained, each corresponding to a different mechanical mode in the rib waveguide. The mechanical mode profiles as simulated from COMSOL is shown below. The extracted frequency, mechanical quality factor, preliminary long linearity, and G0 are tabulated. From the highlight, we see that the first mechanical mode at 3.96 GHz has the highest SBS nonlinearity at 1,296 per watt per meter. A similar exercise is done for the 2000 micron long SKT rib waveguide. From the probe response, we only observe two FANO peaks when compared to the four in the FC waveguide. The corresponding mechanical mode profiles as simulated on COMSOL is shown below. The extracted frequency, mechanical quality factor, Brillouin law linearity, and G0 are tabulated. From the highlight, we see that the first mechanical mode at 6.88 GHz shows the highest Brillouin nonlinearity at 1847 per meter per watt. This is even larger than the maximum nonlinearity shown in the FC waveguide. We suspect that this is because of a better overlap in the optical and mechanical displacement field in the SKT waveguide when compared to the FC waveguides. Finally, to conclude, we demonstrate Forward SPS in a fully active CMOS compatible silicon photonics platform IMX ISIP 50G. We also implemented a wafer level fabrication of freestanding waveguides using Vapor HF on the same platform. Following this, the SPS is characterized in two different rib waveguide geometries the FC waveguide with 70 nanometer edge depth and the SKT waveguide with 150 nanometer edge depth. The SPS characterization is done by cross-phase modulation measurement.
the maximum Brillouin in nonlinearity is measured for a 2000 micron long SKT rib waveguide spiral at 1847 per watt per meter. Finally, I would like to thank my collaborators on the Morphic project as well as the funding from the European ITN, OMT and HOT. In addition, I would like to thank the listeners for their time and if you have any questions, please go ahead. Thank you.